Hey everyone, Ricardo here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to set up a loss of field protection scheme using the SEL300G protective relay. So a loss of field protection scheme provides protection when a synchronous generator loses its field current. Now this can be caused by an accidental tripping of the field breaker, an open circuit in the field circuit, or just a loss of power to the excitation system. Now whatever the cause of the loss of field condition is, when this happens, the synchronous generator starts acting as an induction motor, drawing reactive power from the power system. And this can cause large currents to be induced both in the stator and the rotor of the generator, which cause heating and damage quickly. Now a way to detect this loss of field condition is to measure the impedance at the generator terminals, since this impedance will move from the load impedance to a different impedance in the negative x-axis after the loss of field condition happens. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video, but before we do that, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We always post videos here about power engineering and power system protection and control. And if you wanna learn more about power engineering and power system protection and control, make sure to check out our online courses where we go into these topics in a lot more detail. All right, so let's jump right into it. Let's see how we can program a loss of field protection scheme using the SEL300G protective relay. So as I mentioned, the SEL300D relay implements the loss of field protection by measuring the positive sequence impedance at the generator terminals. And it does this by using two zones of MO elements, which we can set with a positive or a negative offset. Now for this video, we're going to be focusing on the negative offset scheme, which is the most commonly used one. So what I have over here is the instruction manual for the SEL300D relay. And if we go to page 68, you can see over here on the figure that we have a scheme that implements two zones. And these are basically two MO elements with a negative offset. And as I mentioned before, because the impedance will travel from the load impedance to the negative x-axis during a loss of field condition, the MO elements are looking in the reverse direction that is at minus 90 degrees. So basically, this angle over here, of course, is minus 90 degrees. So our MO elements are looking in the negative X direction. Now you can see here that again, we have two zones and that's because the trajectory of the impedance from the load impedance to the impedance after the loss of field condition occurs depends on the initial loading of the machine. Now for a heavily loaded machine prior to the loss of field condition, the trajectory of the impedance will be something like this. So it would start somewhere around here and it would fall to somewhere around here on the zone one element. Now, if we have a lightly loaded machine, the trajectory of the impedance will look something more like this. So we're gonna have a load impedance that of course is farther out since it's less loaded and the trajectory is gonna look something like this. Now you can see here that for the more severe case when the machine is heavily loaded, the impedance is closer to the origin after the loss of field condition. Again, where the impedance lands after the loss of field condition depends on the initial loading of the machine. Now what's been observed though in real life applications is that this impedance will ultimately land between the average of the direct axis and quadrature axis subtransient impedances of the machine at the low end, again for the heavily loaded case, and between the direct axis or quadrature axis synchronous impedance at high end for the lightly loaded or unloaded case. So with this in mind, typical settings are to set the negative offset of the MO elements to be half the direct impedance transient reactance of the machine. And you can see that over here. This is half X prime D, which is the transient reactance of the machine, the direct axis reactance that is. And we can set the zone one element to be one per unit on the machine's base. And you can see that over here, basically the diameter of the zone one element is one per unit on the machine's base. And we can set the zone two equal to the direct axis synchronous reactance. And of course that's this value over here, X D. Now what this will do is it will ensure that all the cases of the trajectory of the impedance, whether it's unloaded or heavily loaded prior to the loss of field condition are covered. So in other words, these two zones will cover all the possible impedance trajectories following a loss of field condition, no matter what the loading of the machine is prior to the loss of field condition happening. Now this again is the reaches of the MO elements or basically the impedances of the circles, but these elements also have delays a typical delay for the zone one element is 0.1 seconds, which is used basically just to prevent misoperations during switching transients. And a typical delay for the zone two element is 0.5 seconds. And this is used to prevent misoperations during power swings. All right, so that's the typical settings again for the diameter of the MO elements for both the zone one and the zone two elements, as well as the delays. Again, just to summarize, the negative offset can be set at one half the transient direct access impedance of the generator. The zone one would be set at one per unit on the machine space, and the zone two would be set equal to the direct access synchronous reactance of the machine. And the delays are gonna be 0.1 and 0.5 seconds for the zone one and the zone two elements respectively. 
All right, so now let's take a look at the relay settings to see how we can set up this loss of field protection scheme and talk a little bit more about the different settings in the SEL 300G relay. Now, before we go into the settings file per se, I want to show you this spreadsheet, which is a spreadsheet that I created, which automatically calculates the settings for the zone one and the zone two elements for the loss of field scheme based on some user input. And you can download this spreadsheet using the link in the description below. But here you can enter the information on the top table. So this table over here, this is where you would enter your generator data. And the spreadsheet is going to automatically calculate the settings for your SEL 300G relay over here in this table. And I also included a plot for the loss of field protection scheme. And again, you can download this spreadsheet using the link in the description below if you want to use it for your own applications. Again, basically, you enter the information over here on the top table, and then this spreadsheet would automatically calculate the settings for the SEL 300G on this bottom table over here. Now what I have over here are setting examples for a generator that has a rating of 492 MVA at 20 kV. And for our relaying, we have a PT ratio of 167 to one, a CT ratio of 3600 to one. And here is where you would enter your generator reactances so that the spreadsheet can calculate the settings. XD of course is the synchronous reactance of the generator and X prime D is the transient reactance of the generator. And these of course are in per unit, which is typically how this information would be given to you in the generator data sheet or the generator nameplate. And again, the reason why we need this information is because the offset of the most circles are gonna be set to minus one half of the transient impedance. So basically this offset over here is gonna be negative one half this number and that's of course in secondary ohms instead of per unit and then the zone one is going to be set to one per unit on the machine space so for that we just need the mva and the kv of the generator and then the zone two is equal to the synchronous reactance of the generator which is this number over here and again this is just an example but you can plug in your numbers here for your specific generator and your specific relaying scheme the pt ratios the ct ratios for your specific scheme now here though we of course need to convert these reactances which are in per unit to secondary ohms and that's of course because that's what the relay is using for the setting because of course the relay uses the secondary voltage and current so it needs to know the secondary impedance not the per unit impedance so we can convert from per unit to secondary ohms by using the pt and the ct ratios for our specific scheme and so this spreadsheet would convert everything to secondary ohms which is what i have down here on the results and that's so that we can enter this directly in the settings file. And again, this spreadsheet is available for download. You can download it using the link in the description below. All right, so now let's move into the settings file per se. And what I have over here are basically just default settings for an SEL 300G relay, which again, is one of the most popular generator protection relays, at least here in the United States. Now there's a few settings here that we need to configure for our loss of field scheme. And here, of course, I'm gonna be focusing only on the loss of field settings. But of course, if you were to implement these settings in a real life application, you would need to configure all the other settings. Now for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna be focusing on the loss of field settings. So first we need to start with the basic settings, the PT ratio, the CT ratio, the nominal voltage, and the nominal current. For this example, I'm gonna be using the settings from the generator that I just showed you in the spreadsheet, which again has a rating of 492 MVA and a rated voltage of 20 kV. And the CT ratios and the PT ratios were 3600 to one and 167 to one respectively. So in here in the settings file, we can go to group one, and let me expand this. We can go here to general data. And here we can program the CT ratio. Again, this is 3600 to one for our example. We can also program the PT ratio. This is gonna be 167 to one for our example. And then if you scroll down here, we have the nominal voltage, which in our case is gonna be 20 kV divided by 167. And 20 kV, of course, is the line to line voltage. So we can just take that 20 kV, divide that by 167. So 20,000 divided by 167, that gives us roughly 120. And here I'm just gonna round to a full number. So I'm gonna say that the line to line voltage, nominal voltage secondary is 120. Now we can also calculate the nominal current and that's actually calculated in the spreadsheet. So let me just go back to that. That is this number over here. And again, here we have also the nominal voltage in secondary volts. And here we have the nominal current in secondary amps. Basically what this is, is we're taking the MVA, 
dividing that by 20 kV times square root of 3. That's going to give us the nominal current in primary amps. And then we can divide that by the CT ratio, which is 3600 to 1. And that's going to give us 3.95. And you can see the question over here. We've taken C4, which is the MVA, this number over here times 1 million since we need to convert that to volt amperes dividing that by square root of 3 times c3 which is the nominal voltage times 1000 because this of course is in kv and then we're dividing everything by c6 cell c6 which is the ct ratio which in our case is 3600 to 1. so if you run that calculation you'll get that the nominal current basically the current at full load for this generator given our pt ratio and ct ratio would be this number 3.95 so we can go back to the settings file and we would enter that over here. Inom is 3.95. And here the relay just rounds to one decimal place. So we can just enter 4.0 and we're given an error over here. That's for the differential element. I'm going to disable that for now just so that we don't get that error. Again, here we're just going to be focusing on the loss of field settings. And so now we can go to the loss of field section, which is here under group one and 40 elements. 40, of course, is the NC device number for loss of field protection schemes. So we, of course, need to enable our function. So we can set E40 to yes, that enables the loss of field scheme. And here we can enter our settings again. All of this would be calculated in the spreadsheet. Basically, the zone one mode diameter is the generator's base impedance, so one per unit on the generator's base converted to secondary ohms. For our example, that was 17.56 ohms secondary and again here the relay rounds to one decimal place the offset of the zone one element was again one half of the transient reactance of the generator in the negative directions so that was 1.81 for our example again minus 1.81 and when we enter that we get some errors over here because we haven't entered the zone two settings yet once we enter those this error is going to go away and then we said that the delay for that is going to be 0.1 second again that's just to write through switching transients and then we calculated our zone two element to be 20.88 which is equal to the synchronous reactance of the generator and our offset is going to be the same as the zone one which is minus 1.81 we can hit enter and again the relay rounds to one decimal place and now you can see that the error went away and then we said again that the delay for the zone 2 element was going to be 0.5 seconds that's going to help us not trip during power swings and again this is all from the spreadsheet and let's just summarize it the offset for both zones is going to be the same which is going to be half the transient reactance in the negative direction the zone 1 is one per unit on the generator's base and the zone 2 is the synchronous reactance of the generator again all of this combined from per unit to secondary ohms based on the rating of the machine and the pt ratio and the ct ratios now lastly we see that we have this setting over here 40 ztc that's the torque control for this 40 or loss of field protection scheme what this means is that the relay will allow the loss of field elements to operate only if this condition is a logical one now in this case i'm going to leave this at the default setting which is not 60 lop meaning there's no loss of potential condition this relay orbit 60 lop is basically a relay orbit that will tell you when there's an issue with the pt circuit and so you don't want to trip when there's an issue with the pt circuit there's internal logic in the relay that detects that condition and then asserts this relay orbit 60 lop that's a loss of potential condition and so i'm saying i'm only going to enable the loss of field elements which of course rely on good voltage i'm only going to operate on those if i don't have a loss of potential condition. So if I have a not, which is represented by this exclamation point, not 60 LOP. Now, the last thing that we need to do, of course, is to program the outputs of our zone one and zone two loss of field elements to the trip equation. And then the trip equation to the output contact that will physically trip the breaker. So we can see that here under group one and trip close ER output elements. Here's where all your trip equations and output equations are. For this example, we're just gonna be using trip equation number one. So this one over here. And we're gonna program that to be 40 Z1T or 40 Z2T. Those are the zone one and the zone two loss of field relay orbits. So let's actually go back to the instruction manual real quick. And we're gonna go over here to page 63 and here is the internal logic for the loss of field elements here you can see that we have our 40 z1t relay orbit that's going to be our trip orbit for the loss of field element one so the zone one 
and we also have the same thing for the zone 2 40 z2t and notice over here again that we have the 40 ztc setting that's the torque control that we talked about for the loss of field elements notice that that relay war bit if you follow this over here is ended with the output of the zone 1 calculation and the zone 2 calculation meaning this needs to be a logical one for these two AND gates to work. And so you can see here how that setting is actually disabling the trip war bits over here and here if it's a logical zero. So we need that to be a logical one. For our case, we program that to not 60 LOP. So if there's no loss of potential condition, that's gonna be not zero. So that's gonna be a logical one. And it's gonna allow our loss of field elements to trip. Of course, if the measured impedance falls within their circles, and of course, after they go through the timers for each zone, we program this one to be 0.1 seconds, and we program this one to 0.5. All right, so going back to the settings file, we programmed our trip equation over here. The last thing that we need to do, of course, is to program the trip equation into an output that will be wired to the trip coil of the breaker to physically trip a breaker. And this could, of course, also be wired to a lockout relay that does multiple functions. In any case, for this example, we're gonna say that output 101 is gonna be the one performing the tripping function. Whether that trips directly a breaker or that trips a lockout that eventually trips the breakers, that's gonna depend on your specific application. But ultimately, for this example, I'm saying that this output is what's actually going to perform the tripping function. So we programmed our zone one and zone two loss of field elements on trip equation number one. And then we programmed trip equation number one to output 101. All right, so that's how you program a loss of field protection scheme using the SEL 300G protective relay. And again, you can download the spreadsheet that we use in this video for calculating the settings using the link in the description below. And if you want to learn more about power system protection and control, be sure to check out our online courses where we go into these topics in a lot more detail. And as always, make sure to like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to the channel for more videos about power engineering and power system protection and control. And we'll see you in the next one.